you you stated that um, when seniors are not able to take care of themselves safely in their own home, can you give someone like me that might not have uh, the indicators of what when that's the appropriate time of when people should be looking for that? Hi there, everybody. We're here for another episode of Joe Knows, and we're going to learn about senior advising. I have Vicki Josephek, a certified senior advisor here with me at Oasis Senior Advisors, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thanks. Thanks for having me. My name is Vicki Josephek. I'm the owner of Oasis Senior Advisors. I help families find senior living options um, in Michigan when they're ready to start exploring for their loved ones. Okay, so can you explain what senior uh, Oasis Senior Advisors is and the role of an advisor? Yeah, so when a family needs to start exploring senior living for a family member, a loved one, a grandparent, a parent that is no longer safe at home, they would contact us and we would help them narrow down the search of what senior living option would be the right fit for them. How can someone get in contact with you? So someone could get in contact with me by either calling my cell phone directly. Uh, my number is 586-596-8523. They can go directly to our website, um, Oasis Senior Advisors Macomb, and fill out a, a inquiry that they're looking for some options, and we would reach out to them right away. Um, they could also send me an email at vjosephek at youroasisadvisor.com. You, you stated that um, when seniors are not able to take care of themselves safely in their own home, can you give someone like me that might not have uh, the indicators of what when that's the appropriate time of when people should be looking for that? So typically there's, there's different options of senior living. Someone might just need to move to senior living for socialization. Maybe their spouse has, has passed away and they just need to socialize more with individuals um, their own age or doing things that they like to do with other people. So we would look into something more independently. Um, that's kind of when, when you see your parent really not doing anything in the home, um, not socializing, that's when you would know like maybe it's time for an independent living community. When you're looking more at assisted living or memory care, signs that you want to look for, are they able to you know, shower on their own? Are they a fall risk? Are they able to, um, we call them ADLs, activities of daily living. Are they able to dress themselves, feed themselves, um, go to the bathroom on their own? We want to look for things that maybe they're not able to do on their own anymore, and that's an indicator that they would need to start looking for senior living. Okay, yeah, that's great because you know, when you're younger, you don't realize when it's the tipping point of when somebody might need that help. Yeah. And it's hard to, because you think when you're younger, you think you're invincible. So <clears throat> you think that's never going to be me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long that typically lasts with people like at their age, where I'm sure there are some people that try to be super independent, even though they can't. Right. And um, it's good to have the indicators of when somebody should be looking yeah. for your services. Um, so how are you guys different than other companies? So we're different with when somebody calls us, they're going to get one of us as an advisor. We're going to walk them through the whole process. We're going to be there the whole um, through the whole transition uh, from talking to them on the phone, figuring out what their care needs are, their financials, their location, preference. We're going to help them create a list of options so that they don't have to do the calling on their own or call the communities and get you know everybody bombarding them with phone calls of coming coming for a tour we're going to be able to work with them narrow it down to two or three options tour with the family um, help them transition their loved one over to that new community we're they're completely 100 percent hands-on other companies you know if you go online um, and you put in your name that you're looking for senior living you might just get bombarded with a list of options how does that help a family? They don't know where to even begin because every community is is a little different in its own way. So we really want to narrow it down to let's find the right fit community for that loved one and not waste any time. Okay, and then so how do you guys <clears throat> do your research with um, determining which 
facilities are good or still good? Do you get feedback from clients yeah. and, and work with that? How does that work? So our role as an advisor, when we're not with clients, our eyes are on the communities. We visit the communities weekly. We meet with the staff. We try their food all the time. We meet with residents. We're in those communities, eyes in them. We know what's going on. Um, when we're with families, we are touring with them all the time. So again, we're in those communities all day long. We know um, which ones are going to be the right fit because we know some communities can take a certain care level and some can't. So we know which one, when we're working with a family and we ask them, can your loved one do this, this, and this, we know which community is going to be a right fit for those care needs and which ones can't handle those specific care needs. Okay. Yeah. That's great because you know, you, you need that first person experience like you said that you're trying the food you're talking to the people so that you can actually give a good um suggestion as to where they should be placed um versus just looking at statistics or numbers it doesn't usually tell the whole story right. um and that's what people look at online and they say well this place looks good it right. might look good on paper mm -hmm. but it might not be the right fit for what they need yeah and sometimes i'll say you know yes it's a it might not be a shiny brand brand new penny community but the care is great there and we know that because we're in there and we have families in there and we've heard how great the care is so we don't always want to look at the best you know most updated community all the time it doesn't mean that they have the best care so that's why it's important for us to be in the communities and know what's going on so we know how to refer right. the right one right and then I know you spoke a little bit about it earlier but can you go into the different options of the care yeah. or the facilities that yeah are so there's so there's typically um, the ones that we work the most with are we have a memory care communities that just focus on clients that have memory care issues um, we have assisted living, so they're needing help with their activities of daily living every day. Um, that would be some more, you know, it's a, it's a lockdown community, so they can't just wander out of the building, something that just keeps them more safe and secure. Then we also have independent living communities where they're still able to do most of their activities of daily living by themselves, but they just need it more for like socialization, um, they want to be involved, you know, with other people their age, and that's in our, our those are typically our independent living communities. And then we have something called um, AFC homes. So those are adult foster care homes. They are a residential home um, in a neighborhood that typically can take, you know, s up to six residents, and the care is 24-hour, round-the-clock care. So it's somebody who might need more. Um, their care needs are higher, and that would be a really good fit for them. Or they want something that's more homey. So they don't feel that they're in, you know, a facility or a community. So th that right. typically is another option that we really like to look into if their care needs are high. Okay. And then what areas do you service in Michigan? So we are, Oasis is a nationwide company. So we have an Oasis in most states. For me, I handle most of Macomb and Oakland Township. And then there's five other Oasis uh, branches in throughout Michigan. So we pretty much cover the whole state of Michigan. Oh, nice. But if they're looking for um, to move their family member to maybe uh, one of their children or in a different state, we can help connect them with an Oasis advisor in another state. Yeah, that's awesome, especially nowadays because, <clears throat> you know, back in the day, everybody used to live in the same spot forever. Mm -hmm. And now it's so easy to move to a different state so quickly. And there are families that have family members in other states so yeah. that's great to know that you can place them in a quality facility even without being there because you have people in those places that know right. the facilities yeah. that's awesome yes um okay so have you had any issues with a client or clients regarding like having estate planning or needing an estate plan at all? Yeah, so typically when we originally get um, a phone call from a family that's looking for help, we will always ask them a series of questions. And a lot of them uh, will be regarding their estate planning um, or are, do, is, does your loved one have a POA? Are you the um, power of attorney for your loved one? Because we do need somebody who is in charge of that loved one to move them into a community if they're not able to do it on their own. Um, so there was a, cl a particular client that did not have somebody. Um, and we had to, we, you know, at the time, we didn't know you as a resource. So what we had to do is get um, somebody else involved and they had to go to the court and get that 
get those documents on their own and and it, it does t it is a lengthy process for them to get something like that if they don't have somebody that can help yeah assist. and and that's what i try to help people with you know i've had clients call me before and they had they called me and said you know my mom is in this facility and they're trying to move her to a different facility that we don't want her to be at and can we create the power of attorney documents to keep her at this facility well guess what happened um her mom was not mentally capable at that time to sign a power of attorney and it was they called me on a friday i still remember it was a friday afternoon and they called me and they they said she's moving on monday and if her mom was mentally capable of signing documents i could have gotten the paperwork done and they would have been able to keep their mother in that facility that they wanted her to stay at mm -hmm. on monday but because she wasn't capable of doing it, it was too late. Then you have to go to court. You're going to pay court costs. It takes months, if not longer. Um, I always recommend getting your estate plan done. Um, I have some questions about you personally. Okay. Let's okay. see if we can answer some of these questions. Let, let, the, let the, the people get to know you a little okay. bit more. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your kids and, okay. and their hobbies? So I have three daughters, uh, 10, 6, and 4. They are all dancers, uh, two of them competitively, d competitively dance. And um, so we travel a lot with that. Um, it pretty much takes up most of my time when I'm not helping families. Um, but yeah, we are, we're a dance family and, and we love it. So, so how did your kids get into dance? Are you, did you dance before? I mean, I wasn't as great <laughs> as they were, but yes, I did dance when I was um, when I was younger, and then I did cheerleading throughout high school, and I just loved it and wanted my oldest to get into it, and she just she just fell in love with it, and then everyone just kind of fell fell in or followed her tracks, and here we are, three dancers later. I do love to travel. Um, I'm I would I just to tropical places, just beaches only. Um, I'm not, I don't like the cold weather. So that is something that uh, I try to do, you know, as, as often as I can with my kids and without sometimes. Yeah. What's your favorite place that you've been to? Oh, geez, that's a good one. Um, I, I love Florida. I just do. Florida is, I think it's the easiest place to go sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I, I really loved a trip I went to, uh, Dominican Republic. It was oh. one of my favorite trips. Where, where did you stay there? Because we love the Dominican Republic. I don't remember. It was like... <laughs> oh, that great. It was like 14 years ago. <laughs> okay, I think I need okay. to go back. Oh, yeah. Yes. We went. We've been twice and it's we loved gorgeous. it both times. It's, yeah. very, it's awesome. Definitely recommend yeah. Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. um, no, that's awesome. Yeah, I love to travel too. We're, we're going on a couple of trips later this year mm -hmm. and Florida is one of them. Yeah. And uh, we're excited for that so yeah um, gotta travel yes, yes exactly which facility has the best food since you've tried them all <sighs> i i can't answer that <laughs> but um i will say that there are a handful that have um wonderful chefs they do really great um they have really great about staffing their kitchens i mean that is i will say that the number one not maybe not the number one thing but a lot of seniors requests are to have great food i mean they're moving somewhere where they're getting waited on hand and foot why not have the best food so that is very important to a lot of families and i do feel a lot of the communities make sure that that is um that is something that they they hire the best staff for so yeah great food yeah i think i think that's the number one thing too i mean when you go like we said with traveling it's the food right yes. like you try all these different kinds of foods yeah. that you're, you don't usually get at your hometown and then that makes the experience a lot better yeah. when you are traveling mm -hmm. um especially for me i mean we've we've gone to a couple of all-inclusive resorts and there are a couple of them that stood out way more than the others and yeah. i'm like I'm going to those places again mm -hmm. because the food's the beach, great. Yeah, the beach. Yeah. Well, the beach. There's like 20 resorts on one beach. It's like which? Why should you go to one versus the other? Right. If you're gonna be at the same place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the senior advisor stuff, <clears throat> when you are considering a place to go to, not only do you want to go to a place that is best for you in what you need, but also from an estate planning standpoint, um, there are ways to pay for the services um, where you can 
protect your assets so that you're you are not wasting all of your money do you um deal with places that take medicaid Yes, so we've got a couple options that can work with something called a Medicaid waiver program. Okay. Um, where it helps pay for a portion of the rent and then their care needs. We do have uh, rehab, skilled nursing, long term care facilities that also take Medicaid. So we can always help a family member that, you know, might already be on Medicaid or looking for a Medicaid bed. So, yes, we do have options for, for low income Medicaid. Right. And uh, one thing that it goes, um, unnoticed or is not really known because typically people don't are not educated in estate planning generally it's just not something that people know about um, with proper estate planning you can preserve 70% or more of your money and still qualify for Medicaid facilities in the state of Michigan especially in Oakland County and um, people don't realize this benefit of having an estate plan. They typically contact me and ask me for stuff for, you know, God forbid when they pass away. But this is a living benefit that people can take advantage of where in the state of Michigan, in order to qualify for Medicaid, you can only have two or $3,000 in assets and then get Medicaid to help you out. Mm -hmm. But if you have a complete plan with Medicaid protection, you can preserve 70% or more of your assets and still qualify for the Medicaid uh, facilities. And we know where the best Medicaid facilities are. Mm -hmm. So if you are serious about protecting the money that you've worked so hard to obtain, you need to have an, a proper estate plan in place. Because even if you only have $30,000, for example, you're going to have to spend all of that money on Medicaid or on, on the facility and what is that like three months three months of getting a facility for thirty thousand dollars or you can get an estate plan which is consider considerably less expensive than that and preserve twenty to twenty thousand or more of that thirty thousand dollar example that's a huge benefit for people and they don't realize that until it's too late and if you when you need it you're probably not going to be able to get it or it's going to cost a lot more to be able to get that. If a family calls us or wants to work with us, we're always a free service for families. So that's something to, you know, that I feel is really important to know. Um, you'll never have to, uh, we, we will never ask for payment if just for us to be able to help you. Yeah. See, that's always, <clears throat> that's always a good thing too, is to explain how, you, how the structure works because a lot of times people come to me and they think, oh, you're going to be too expensive. But when I explain to them all of the stuff that they are getting and what they're actually paying for and what services they don't pay for, um, they understand the value of it. And this is a free service. You can you can call Vicky and even just inquire yep. when to talk to her about her services. Um, when is a good time to get in touch with her? You know, how far in advance? Um, cause I'm sure there's like a wait list for some facilities, correct? Well, there are some that have a wait list, but everything, you know, I don't know if it was due to COVID, you know, a lot of people weren't moving or trying to stay at home as long as possible. So currently right now you're not finding a lot of wait lists, which okay. is really great. Um, but just cause they call me, doesn't mean that they have to make the move right now. Being proactive is always the right, the right way to go and even if they need a resource maybe they need home care first or they need some type of service to come into their home we will always provide some type of resource for them even if it's not looking at a community to move into right away yeah i'm all about the proactive thing so yeah. um you know if you need vicky's services or if you're considering it you can contact her now just to get uh, a head start and see what places might be appropriate for you and your family and go from there. Okay, so Vicki, let's say um, somebody's ready to proceed or to contact you. What is the process? What do they need to bring? What What do you need from them? How does it work? So typically what will happen is a family will reach out to me and they'll or one of my advisors and we will do um, what we call an intake with the family. So they can either choose to do it over the phone. Sometimes we've do, done a Zoom call with multiple family members on it or we can meet them somewhere in person to kind of sit down and talk. And what we really want to find out are three really important things. What is that family member, the loved one's care needs? We ask a series of questions. Where they're at with their care, um, we need to know exactly. We, when we're looking, 
into their care, we want to make sure we're, we're looking at communities that can accommodate that. Um, the second thing is location preference. Where do they want their loved one to be located? Closer to them, maybe they want them in the same area that they've been living. And then three, we really break down their financials because senior living is all private pay. So we really want to get an idea of where they're at, their loved one is at financially, what can they afford so that we can weed out ones that might be too expensive. We can um, you know, help them in the process of finding something that's affordable for them. Awesome, yeah, because you know, I've never been through the process yet, so I don't know, you know, how that works. So yeah. that's great to know, you know, what's needed in that situation. Thank you, Vicki, for joining us and giving us all this great information about when people should look for your services and the help that you can provide for them. Um, I hope you had a good time on the show. I did. Thank you. And um, if you want to get in contact with me for any estate planning needs, whether you need a trust, guardianship of minor children, protecting your home or your assets, you can give me a call at 248-914-8146 or email me at joe at dallowestateplanning.com. Thank you again for joining us on another episode of Joe Knows and hope you have a great day.